Hello and welcome to another episode of Taylor Talks Comics. Today, we're going to go over the Black Hammer reading order with everything in hardcover. Stay tuned. All right, so here, if you want to screenshot this or what have you, this is the reading order that we'll be going over. Here's what all the spines look like and all the books included. Now I'm going to flip the camera around and actually give you a look, an overhead view of all these books and go through them and talk about how great Black Hammer is and why you need to be reading it and how this reading order is actually pretty easy. Before we get started, I do want to say that I do have a promo code with Organic Price Books. You can use that. If you uh, buy one, one, two, or three books, you're going to want to use the promo code TaylorTalksComics, and that'll save you $2 off your order. If you're ordering four or more books, you, wanna, you want the bigger savings, you're going to use TTC, ship it together. They'll put four or more books together in one package, ship them to you. TTC, ship it together, will save you 5% off that order. So $2 off if you're ordering one, two, or three books, 5% if you're going to put a bigger order in. And me, this channel gets a little bit of kickback. If you uh, put an order in like that, two organic price books, um, it's one way to, sh to support the channel monetarily. All right. So I already have a video on my channel of a Black Hammer reading order. That's when there was only, geez, I can't remember, three or four of these library editions um, available on the market. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, ten total. Tintedal hardcovers that I'll be talking about today. Officially, I guess, eight library editions and then two other books. Um, but this is a great series, and I kind of pitched it as being a great uh, jumping-on point if you, want to, if you want to read superhero comics, but you feel daunted by the continuity issues of the vast Marvel DC universes, then this is like the perfect one to start with. However, now we're at a point where Jeff Lemire and Dean Ormston have... Um, they have created this universe and, and fleshed it out so much that we are now up to 10 books. And now it's getting kind of to the point to where it's getting kind of confusing for new readers to jump onto. So that's what this video is for. Um, I absolutely love this series. I think this is the best superhero series that we've had this <clears throat> century, like of the 2000s. Uh, it's really magnificent, um, especially the first 12 issue series that kicks this off. Uh, I think the things that Jeff Lemire does with the storytelling is magnificent because there's there's <clears throat> and i always pitch it this way too because it's new reader friendly for someone that's like brand new to superheroes someone that's never read superhero comics but maybe have an interest in the genre um it's perfect for them because it is just a great superhero story however for long time comic book fans there's a lot of like meta commentary interspersed within the story that you'll pick up on and really kind of uh put a smile on your face of understanding the references and the Easter eggs that Jeff Lemire is kind of uh, pointing out to you or putting in there for you. Um, but by no means, if you've not read, if you won't, don't pick up on those things, you'll still enjoy the, ser the series nonetheless. So all of these library editions, um, which is eight of the 10 books I'm going to show off today, do come with dust jackets. For the ease of this video, I already pulled off all the dust jackets so I don't have to fumble with them as I go through each book. And the dust jacket looks exactly the same as the art you see on these library editions. I will point out, <clears throat> excuse me, um, volume one here does have like a matte finish to it. And all the other ones are pretty glossy on the finish to the book. A little bit different, I guess. Just some, something to point out. Some people might care about that. Um, but this is the first Black Hammer library edition, volume one. So you'll notice in that the picture started off the video, some of them say World of, some of them just say Black Hammer. The main universe, the main story is just going to say Black Hammer, so there's three volumes of that. There's volumes one, two, and three. If you want just that and none of the spinoffs, you can read it that way. You won't be, you'll be missing out on the introduction of a lot of the characters that you see in some of the later stories. But if you're wanting to like just condense it down, like, okay, I want to try out Black Hammer, I can, you know, I can afford or, or buy three books right now, I'll just get volumes one, two, and three. You can do that. Um, but this 
reading order is going to show you where the World of Black Hammer spinoffs fit in between. See on the back here, you have their main cast of characters. These are the people that are the characters that you're going to see um, that everything else in the universe revolves around. You have Abraham Slam, Colonel Weird, Talkie Walkie, uh, Golden Gale, Barbalian, and Madam Dragonfly. So these, the premise of the story is that right when you get launched into the story, all of these characters are on this farm and they're trapped on this farm. They can't find their way out of this the area of this farm they've tried. One of the superheroes that you don't see here tried to escape the farm and there was like a force field. Kind of, I mean, this takes place before, or this was written before, but it, it kind of reminded me of what you saw in WandaVision when, in that one episode when uh, Vision and Wanda are trying to escape and there's like that force field wall. Kind of similar to that, but again, this came before that. Um, so they're stuck on this farm and in this little town trying to find their way out. Before that happened was the cataclysm, this big crisis event, if you think of like DC comics, where all these characters were fight fighting this giant um, evil villain called the Anti-God. Again, you can think of like Darkseid or Thanos. <clears throat> and they had another hero with them called Black Hammer, who wields this hammer right here. And that hero went and went like all out, tried to strike anti-God down to, you know, kill him. And this big cataclysm happened, this big flash event, this big explosion. Next thing they know, they wake up on this farm. And now, so that's like the premise of the story. You're trying to figure out who these characters are. It's been 10 years since that event that they've been living on this farm, trying to find their way. And things aren't normal um, for any of them. But some of them are trying to find what normal life looks like beyond their superheroics, and some of them are trying to find out, or are trying to escape because they can't stand it. So you have Gail here, who her superpower is, she's kind of like a reverse uh, Shazam. So she is, at this point, she's an old, elderly lady. I think she's in her 50s or 60s. And when she says, um, was it Zafram? I said it was Shazam. She turns into this young girl with superpowers. However, since they've been turned on, since they've been locked on this farm, she's been stuck as that little girl. So that's one of the one of my favorite characters, because she's this like middle aged girl, or middle aged woman trapped in a little girl's body. And to keep up appearances, they have to have this girl still go to school, and you know go through the paces of that. Um, Abraham Sam acts as if he's her grandfather. So this middle-aged woman is going through school and she cusses and smokes and it's just funny to see a little kid doing that. Um, you have Taki Walkie here um, in Barbalian. So <clears throat> it starts off with them trying to really trying to see them adjust to their normal life. But you get some background here. Like you see Barbalian on Mars as the hero as he used to be, Golden Gale as the hero she used to be. And Dean Ormson does a great job with these panels showing you that they're flashbacks while they're having this conversation. There's Colonel Weird, who you'll see is a, like a time-traveling um, Adam Strange type character where he's constantly going through different dimensions. And then there's Madame Dragonfly, who is like, I guess she's like the House of Secrets or House of um, Mysteries host or the EC horror host kind of thing. But she's also, I feel like, kind of similar to like Raven from Teen Titans or New Teen Titans. Um, Barb Alien has the powers to, just like... Uh, Martian Manhunter. He can tr transform himself to look more human. So while he's on the farm, he transforms himself into this human. And his character is amazing too because he has the... And I'm trying not to spoil too much because I want you to be able to read and enjoy these. But I'll just say, on Mars, he was an outcast for some of his beliefs and the way he uh, thought things should go. And then here on Earth, even though he can transform himself into a human, he has to feel like an outcast in certain ways because of other things that he believes are the way he lives his life. Each of the covers, too, on this first volume are separated by the the uh, original cover without the trade dress, and then Jeff Lemire does a homage cover on the inside, on the others on on, <clears throat> on the other side of that. So each chapter is broken up. So that was the end of an issue, issue number one. Then you get the actual cover for issue two, Jeff Lemire's cover, and then it gets into the next um, story. So it's really, really amazing. And this first volume collects all 12 issues. And there's like a mystery going on throughout it. And Jeff Lemire is great with mystery and horror and sci-fi. 
really all those genres and he really gets to intersperse them all throughout this um we do have some uh, david rubin artwork in here as well i love david rubin's art and style usually too throughout the series you'll find out that colonel weird as he goes through different dimensions they'll use that plot device to change the artist which i think is a, a clever way to uh, do that because a lot of times in superhero comics you'll struggle with um, having the artwork change between issues. Well, when they have a ex storyline excuse, like, oh, he's in another dimension, so it's going to look different. And they use that. It kind of kind of works. I like it. And David Rubin's just absolutely brilliant. I'll read any comics that David Rubin draws. Um, but yeah, so you're trying to solve the mystery of why they're stuck on this farm. Can they get out? Uh, is there someone involved? Is there some double-crossing happening within the group? And then you have this character here oh there's some uh matt kent artwork matt kent's a great artist as well and he's a good friend of jeff lemire you have lucy here um is a character where she is trying to figure out where her dad went because when she's a little girl is when her dad is black hammer the, the superhero that tried to kill the anti-god and, and cause the cataclysm event she was just a little girl then um so for 10 years she's been trying to as a journalist find out and discover where the heck he, he went and she finds herself on the farm herself and is trying to, you know, solve the mystery for these heroes. You know, find out some of the heroes that are on the farm don't want to leave. They're fine with that life. They don't need to be superheroes anymore. And some of them desperately want to leave. So a lot of, uh, there's anti-god right there. A lot of interplay and in, in dynamics within, interfighting and in, in dynamics within that. Um, Fred Himbeck doing a pinup. So yeah, all these library editions have some really cool extras in the back too. Character profile sheets. You'll see Jeff Lemire in this first one. Talk about how he originally had the idea of him. That he'd be doing the artwork and the story for it. But he just couldn't, you know, make up the time. So that's volume one. That's what you're going to read first. Then next you're going to read World of Black Hammer volume one. So this is the first of the spinoff titles. It says World of Black Hammer right here. It tells you the creators involved in volume one. So we're getting to the spinoffs to get to know a couple characters that you're gonna that are, that are gonna be important going forward and this one includes the spinoffs sherlock frankenstein and the legion of evil as well as the other spinoff series dr andromeda and the kingdom of lost tomorrows so same trim sides as the first one same kind of trade dress with the exception of saying world of instead really look nice on the shelf <clears throat> so we start off with uh, sherlock frankenstein and the legion of evil and this is drawn by uh, David Rubin, the aforementioned, the great David Rubin. Dr. Andromeda is drawn by Max uh, Fiumara. So, <clears throat> Sherlock Frankenstein is a bad guy. He's a villain in the world of Black Hammer. Um, he's not as big of a bad as the anti-god, but he was a villain nonetheless. Here's Lucy as a little girl telling the story of her father but having to keep it a secret. But you can see her father here fighting as a black hammer, fighting giant monsters. And there's the anti-god. This is the moment right before the cataclysm. <clears throat> um, yeah, David Rubin's, I don't know. His layout, this, sorry, I don't want to talk about the art. I just love David Rubin's artwork so much. So this is, uh, kind of takes place in a little bit of a flashback. You see Lucy being younger. You see Sherlock Frankenstein, um, this is all pre-cataclysm. You see great Mac, Mike Mignola there. Um, pre-cataclysm, because you're seeing Sherlock Frankenstein. We don't know what happened to him during the cataclysm event. We know what happened to the main heroes that went to the farm, but what happened to everybody else? And what happened to the real world? And these other villains and heroes that exist within that world. Sherlock Frankenstein is one of those villains. So you get a little of <clears throat> insight in here of what happened to him and what he's been up to for the last 10 years. As well as seeing some flashbacks of Lucy when she's younger. And getting involved. Um, trying to search for where her father is. And maybe does Sherlock Frankenstein play a part in that? Play a role in that? We don't know. <clears throat> we also uh, meet this character here. Who's like this uh, Lovecraftian character. The Call of Cthulhu. Instead of Cthulhu, like you um, know of Lovecraft and fame. And he's this guy right here. <clears throat> so he's another character within that universe that you're going to meet as well. 
Then the next one is called Dr. Andromeda and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows. If you've been searching through Black Hammer, you might have seen this character be referred to as Dr. Star. This series, when it first came out, and actually when it was first published in trade paperback even, it was still called Dr. Star and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows. Due to a rights issue with a certain publisher that goes unnamed within the story, they had to change it to Dr. Andromeda. Um, and my personal speculation, which I think is pretty obvious, is that it was DC Comics. Didn't like that the name was too close to their hero um, of Starman. And the fact that this character is a loving homage to Starman. So if you know Starman from um, James Robinson's series of DC Comics, this very much mirrors that character. But the thing about Jeff Lemire, though, is like he'll have these characters that are obvious homages to certain other characters. But then the way he flushes them out and kind of puts spins on their where they go in their life or go in their career, he really kind of flips things on their head. So this isn't just a direct story of Starman. This is actually really brilliant. In a very touching and heartbreaking as well. Um, it's definitely a, what you get from the story of, of Dr. Andromeda is this super obsessive, work obsessed father that puts so much time into his work, he doesn't provide any sort of time with his family, including his, his son. So, <clears throat> and then he, he finds out that his son is sick, and um, that's kind of like where you go from there. That's like kind of the premise, the pitch for that story. You get some. Artwork layouts and stuff like that in the back of this one. Some more pinups from different art art artists. You have Mike Allred right here. Daniel Warren Johnson. Two of my favorite artists going today, those two guys. So, that's World of Black Camera. That's the second book you'll be reading. And then we're going to go back to the main line. We're going back to Black Camera Volume 2 Library Edition. This is the main story. Again, we have Dean Ormston on the artwork for most of it. Uh, but we do have Rich Tommaso in here as well. So you got introduced to those two characters. Now we're going to continue on um, with the Age of Doom, which is the next story arc for Black Hammer. And also has a short um, one issue of Cthulhu Louise, which is the daughter of Cthulhu. And then the world of Black Hammer Encyclopedia. So this time around, we have the, uh, <clears throat> the cover of the issue. And then the next side is a variant from another artist. We have Scotty Young on this side. And then a little catch up. Um, which is nice, because if you're reading these like that, you read the mainline series, then you read all this world of stuff. Now getting back into the mainline, you might forget a little thing, a few things here and there. A little catch-up page. So now we have <clears throat> um, characters trying to find their way out of the farm. And because of Lucy and her investigation, she thinks she's solved the mystery of why they're stuck on the farm and how they can get out. But like I said earlier... These all come with ribbons, too, by the way. All the mainline ones do. I should note. The World of ones don't come with ribbons, which is an odd choice, but I digress. <clears throat> so some characters don't want to leave the farm. Some characters do. Um, some characters don't believe Lucy knows how to get off the farm. That's a lot of the infighting you see there. You see Abraham Slam has developed a rela relationship with one of the townies in this small town, and he doesn't quite want to leave. Um, Gail definitely wants to leave because she's annoyed with being stuck in this little girl's body. She just wants to be her normal self again. And there may be some infighting, some double crosses within the team. We don't know. Colonel Weird is on the investigation too. Here's a great Rich Tommaso artwork. Rich Tommaso is one of my favorite indie cartoonists. Uh, that's a Feral Dalrymple right there. And so I was excited to see he popped into this series a few times. And these are the kind of the island of misfit toys, the heroes that couldn't quite make it. Which reminded me a lot of Legion of um, the Legion of Superheroes when they have like the the Legion of alternate superheroes that didn't quite make the team. And the, here here comes one of the favorite characters that I can tell becomes a fan favorite or maybe one of Jeff Lemire's favorite because he sh starts to pop up like he seems like a one off character in this one, but then he starts to pop up here and there. And he's the Inspector Insector, so he's an insect that's an inspector. You have this Wonder Woman kind of type character that's not quite. The same powers as Wonder Woman. And you see all the other misfits that didn't quite make the team. And there's the anti-god. So that's what you get from there. Here's all the creators. I don't want to spoil that part. It's an interesting part. So yeah, just further investigation of the team. Trying to figure out how to get off the farm. 
And then what, when they do get off the farm, if they get off the farm, what happens then? Here's the Cthulhu Lee's story, who's a misfit in her school because she looks like this, and all the other kids look like humans. It's a great story. And then here's the uh, World of Black Camera Encyclopedia that was put together by Tate Brombell. And it has like all the character profiles and whatnot. And there's a bunch of more pinups with a lot of great artists involved in those. Then we're going to jump back into the World of Black Camera. This is World of Black Camera Volume 2. This one we have Black Camera 45 in the Quantum Age. This one is kind of packaged together as like a two different time periods within the World of Black Camera universe because it's really starting to get fleshed out to where we see a lot of the events from 1945 will lead into what we see of the characters on the farm. And then the quantum age is like way into the future, like a thousand year, years into the future. And we'll see what happens kind of after the fact a little bit. So Black Camera 45 is around this team of pilots that are all fighting in the world war in, in the, um, geez, in the forties together. And they're not getting the recognition they deserve. Um, it kind of mirrors a lot of real world events. This is all drawn by Matt Kent, who is known for like super spy and mind management. He's a good friend of Jeff Lemire and I love his artwork. It's, he does use a lot of like watercolors. <clears throat> um, and then there's giant mech machines involved in the world war, which makes it even cooler. <laughs> Imagine if, uh, you had some science fiction, you got, Maybe some werewolves involved. Yeah, so this is all stuff that take, take, took place before the events of the farm um, and the cataclysm. But it builds into some of the characters that you'll see later on. And then we have the Quantum Age. This was very much a homage to the Legion of Superheroes, the aforementioned. And I love it. And I have to say that the first time I read this, I didn't pick up on the fact that it was Legion of Superheroes because I had no knowledge of the Legion of Superheroes. And that was years ago. And then over the last two years or so, I've been really diving into this Legion of Superheroes through the Silver Age to present. And so now when I did a reread before this video, I picked up on so many different things. I was like, oh, this is Legion of Superheroes. And I loved it so much. Um, I think Jeff Lemire did a great job writing that love letter to one of the more obscure teams in the DC universe. But yeah, this takes place way into the future, kind of seeing how events take, you know, events kind of, uh, they don't tell you everything. They don't say like everything that happens with Black Hammer, you'll see it here, but you'll start to pick up on little things like certain characters. Maybe they have certain lineages of, uh, characters that you know of from the farm era of Black, Black Hammer. And that's could be villains or heroes. Their uh, ancestors <clears throat> might have been a villain or a hero, and they might have taken the opposite route or the same route. Um, again, I don't want to spoil too much for you. But it really is, has a lot of great artwork in here as well. Um, who's the artist on this one? Uh, Rafael, Wilfredo Torres is the artist on this one. And this was like, on, on the reread, one of the most enjoyable spinoffs that I read that I didn't quite pick up on so much the first time reading it. Uh, but you'll see a lot of characters too come come back into the that future from the main cast. And then you're gonna stay in World of Black Hammer for a little bit longer um, on Volume Three and Volume Four. This is Volume Three, and this one stars mini series focused on some of the main characters. You have Colonel Weird, Cosmogog, and Barbarian Red Planet. All right, so you have Colonel Weird, um, Cosmogog first, and that is drawn by Tyler Crook. And uh, Barbalian Red Planet is drawn by Gabriel Hernandez Volta. Um, Tyler Crook, known for um, his horror series. What is it called? Uh, oh, it's, I'm drawing a blank now. It was also published by uh, by uh, Dark Horse Comics. I think uh, Colin Bunn is the art, the writer. Let me know in the comments. I always draw blanks on these videos. <clears throat> I'm sure it's real obvious. And by the way, uh, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and do comment down below with any of your thoughts on any of this, or any more questions. If I haven't answered a question about Black Hammer that you were curious about throughout the, the duration of this video, I'll answer that as well. I always love talking comics with people, and I always reply to all the comments.
Here's a great Evan Dorkin piece. There's so many cool artists that appear in here too. It reminds me a lot of Madman when Mike Albright would have so many different artists do like pinups and stuff. So this is Colonel Weird and he's going through different dimensions trying to um, fix things, which is kind of like his whole premise anyways, is he's constantly going from dimension to dimension, time period to time period, always trying to, to uh, fix the problems of the world and he's always constantly messing it up. And also in the midst of that, um, he'll screw up, um, or he like screws up his, his mind and he goes kind of loopy and crazy because he, as he imagine, like someone that just is constantly seeing different dimensions and time periods, they would probably go nuts. Um, in this story, he meets different versions of himself from different time periods as well. Um, so it's kind of like a ghost of Christmas past type deal, Christmas past, present and future but not Christmas <laughs> in this different selves of his own, I guess. And then he, he always has this odd working relationship with Takiwaki as well from the early days of the farm all the way through. And you'll see that kind of get fleshed out in the story. And then you get to the Barbalian red planet story. So this takes place in two places, Mars and earth. And um, this was been this series has won awards and been touted by as a great LGBTQ plus um, comic book for a lot of the themes that it touches on. And reading this, I absolutely agree that it's heart wrenching. It's like harrowing. It's realistic. Like it's very raw um, throughout the story. The things that they touch on and Tate Brown Bell actually co-wrote this one with Jeff Lemire, Tate Brown Bell. Um, I guess Jeff Lemire is kind of a mentor of his. And he wanted, he had this story for kind of this gay rights activist story that he wanted to write with Barbalian. And um, Jeff Lemire is like, like he kind of pitched the idea to Jeff Lemire to write. And Jeff Lemire is like, why don't you write it? And then they went on from there. So... It definitely deals with a lot of the issues that um, Barbalian has both on Mars and on Earth of trying to fit in. Kind of those, those things I touched on earlier. So another great mini series of fleshing out characters. And we're still in the world of Black Hammer. This is volume four, library edition volume four. And this one, we're going into the 90s. So we dealt with like the 40s. We dealt with the way, way into the future. The Black Hammer events are kind of taking place in the early 2000s. They don't actually give you a clear year. But this one takes t is taking place in the 90s. We have Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy and the Unbelievable Unteens. So Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy is drawn by, um, I'm going to butcher this, but Tonsi Zanjik, uh, great artist. If I pronounce, mispronounce your name, please correct me. And then the Unbe Unbelievable Unteens is drawn by um, David Rubin and Ray Fox. No, no, sorry. That's just that story. The Unbelievable Unteens Horrors to Come. The actual series, Unbe Unbelievable Unteens 1 through 4, is drawn by Tyler Crook. So Skull Digger is kind of your Punisher character. And this takes place in the 90s. So you can think like extreme 90s. It's going to be ultra violent. Um, series like you think like the Punisher would be from that era. And he has these issues with this little child that comes to find him. And he kind of, I mean, doesn't really kidnap him, but kind of brings him on as his sidekick and he can become skeleton boy. Now in the midst of all this, the relationship between, um, the, I guess, genetic relationship and bond between skeleton boy and skull digger and the supervillain involved and, some of the other characters we find involved are all kind of a part of the mystery that you've solved while you're reading this. And I don't want to spoil that, but that's kind of like the depth of the story that really like on the surface, this is a, this violent story, your typical violent hero. You see him, him mentoring him and teaching him how to fight, but below the surface, there's a lot of good uh, mystery and family ties and stuff like that, that really pulls the story together and fleshes out in a big way. And, but it also has this, uh, plot device too where there's an assassination attempt on one of the <clears throat> elected officials that's running for mayor of this town and who is trying to kill this elected official who's trying to save the elected official 
that's all stuff that I'll uh, leave for you to find out. Um, but it does go back into the origins of Skull Digger as well, which took place back in the 1970s. <clears throat> but really, really great story. And the artwork was, this is, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with the Tonsi Zanjik's um, art before this, but after reading the series, when I read it for the first time, I was definitely seeking out anything that he was doing and trying to uh, pick up and support that. All right, so now we have this unbelievable unteen story. Here's like the short story that takes place in between that David Rubin does the artwork for. But the unbelievable unteens is kind of, to me, like New Mutants. And it has like horror vibes to it too. So it kind of reminds me of like New Mutants, like um, Bill Sienkiewicz, Chris Claremont era. But not with the art style, but just the fact that it's like these teenage heroes with superpowers that are uh, dealing with these kind of horrific events. So, and it's very much 90s vibe too. But yeah, so that's the Unbelievable Unteens. That's World of Black Hammer Volume 4. Now we can get back into the mainline series. We can get back to Volume 3. This one just came out, the most recent release. Um, Black Hammer Volume 3. And this is the first of the mainline series that Dean Ormson's not doing the artwork for. It's done by Caitlin Yarsky. And I think David or or Dean Ormston, did I say David Ormston? I'm sorry. Dean Ormston, he's doing the artwork for an upcoming Madam Dragonfly series. Um, so that'll be coming out in the future, I'm sure. Uh, but this was the first one that someone else is doing. And I have to say, Caitlin Yarsky's artwork, again, an artist I wasn't familiar with before this, now I'm a giant fan. Jeff Lemire's doing a uh, homage to Simonson's uh, Beta Ray Bill cover. Great stuff. I wish they kept the trade dress, though. I haven't seen it. I wonder if he... If uh, Black Hammer here is breaking through the title lettering like Beta Ray Bill does in that series. But here, um, it's hard to talk about this series at this point without spoiling a lot of the earlier events. I don't know. I don't know. There's so much in the, the story of Black Hammer that is, is a mystery. Like little plot threads that become mystery that become apparent later on. Um, and things that need to be solved by certain characters. That I don't want to spoil anything for you, really, because it's really quite the experience to read. So I don't know that I can talk about this one much without spoiling things. I will say that we find Lucy here playing uh, a part in the real world, having a husband and kids, and trying to make that work, and trying to find herself in a situation where, uh, similar to what her father dealt with, where she doesn't want to necessarily be a hero. She wants to just be a normal human that doesn't have to deal with a lot of these superheroic issues we get a little oh this this is cool too this one um this volume three here has little i think they're one one or two pages yeah two page strips of inspector and sector drawn by rich tomaso and they're a lot of fun too and they'll play a role later on as well so inspector and sector becomes quite the uh character that like i said it seemed like he was just a character that maybe wasn't supposed to mean much Early on, and Jeff Lemire kind of got hooked on him and wanted to write more, flesh out his character more. Maybe also Rich Tommaso. But yeah, Colonel Weird is involved in a lot of this um, story at this point as well. And this is, yeah, I should have said that too. This is called Black Hammer Reborn, is what this series is called. And this is one where you can see Skulldigger and Skeleton Boy, all the characters really, of all the previous books you just read, are going to play a role and a part in... Um, this volume three and it is like kind of the big climax to the library edition so far currently um being released is black hammer the end by jeff lemire and that'll eventually get a library edition release but i don't think it'll be too soon i think it'll be kind of far off uh jeff lemire does have an exclusive deal with image right now but they're allowing him to do black hammer universe stuff i've not got any sort of clarification on this, so if anybody does know, let me know in the comments. But I thought that it was kind of like, go ahead and finish up your Black Hammer stuff, then you'll be exclusive with us. And then I assumed as a fan that years down the road, Jeff Lemire would revisit Black Hammer um, when, the, when that deal was up. But it seems that Jeff Lemire has all these plans to continue on with Black Hammer for a number of years, that he's gonna, it's not just a finish up and then he'll stay with us. It's kind of a stay with us and 
the only other thing you could do is Black Hammer. <laughs> I don't know. So this was an odd release. Um, and I want to bring this other book into play too. I hold these books on our previous haul video and talked about this. But um, this... Well, I kind of have to talk about the, all three of these books at once. How about, how about we do that? So we have here The World of Black Hammer, Volume 5. We have Black Hammer and Justice League, Hammer of Justice, and then Colonel Weird and Little Andromeda. Um, for all intents and purposes, this one is in continuity. This is just like a fun spinoff that you don't nece it's not necessarily in continuity. It's not necessary to read. Um, but if you're a fan of Black Hammer and you want more, if you're a fan of Justice League, maybe pick that one up. And then this one take has all the uh, Black Hammer Vision stories, which are Black Hammer single issues that were all written by someone else. So you see names on here like Patton Oswalt, Scott Snyder, Mariko Tamaki, um, Cecil Castellucci, Johnny Christmas, and more. And I would say that the three of these are either odd releases or maybe not necessarily not necessary to read with Black Hammer. So if you just want to read the previous seven books I talked about, that gives you everything you need for the, the chunk of the universe. This Black Hammer Visions that, that are in Volume 5 um, are not in continuity, Jeff Lemire has said. They're just other people's visions of these characters that wanted to write. So you'll see like in here, um, let's see. Yeah, so you have Patton Oswalt, Jeff Johns is in here, Colin Bunn, Kelly Thompson, Chip Zdarsky. And they all take like a character they wanted to write about and, and go go with it. So Patton Oswalt does a Golden Gale story. Um, i trying to remember. It doesn't say... I wish the, the contents told you which character they were doing, but it was kind of hard to remember. Black Hammer Visions... Oh, Colin Bunn does the Madam Dragonfly series, which is an obvious choice because Colin Bug Bunn does uh, horror comics so well. Harold County? Harold County is the name of the Colin Bunn Tyler Crook series. It just came to my brain. If you already typed in the comments, then congrats to you. Uh, but dang it, I, I got it. Sometimes those things just pop into your brain. Harold County was what I was thinking of. You have a Skull, Dug Skull Digger Skeleton Boy series story in here too, the single issue. So these are all just single issues of other creators do, kind of taking their, with their take on some of these characters. Not in continuity, not super necessary to read, but it is a lot of fun. Um, some of these different takes you see on these heroes is fun. Um, I will say also, though, of all the books, this is probably my, the weakest of them. And I say that as a huge Black Hammer fan that thinks most of these books are 10 out of 10s. This was hit or miss. Some of the Vision stories were great, 10 out of 10s as well. But some of them were like, eh, okay. I kind of just want Jeff Lemire to write the story again. And so this can be read after all the other stuff I've talked about previously in any order. Any of these three books can be read in any order because they're not in continuity. This is Black Hammer Justice League. This is a standard size hardcover, which is what I want to talk about because previously the two Visions books, there was two Vision standard standardized hardcovers that came out and they were the same exact trade dress as this. For the longest time, I didn't think, it was, I didn't know if, any of these books were ever going to hit the uh, library edition yet. It didn't seem like it. But then finally they announced Volume 5 and they put the Visions in there. So I was like, yes. But I was still kind of holding off on buying this because I was like, one day they're going to put this into a library edition. I don't need to buy that book. But part, part of the reason I bought this was because I wanted to do this video. Part of the reason is that uh, I didn't know if it's going to be in a library edition. With all that said, there is a precedence for... Dark Horse reprinting a DC property in a library edition. We saw the Madman um, by the Mike Ballred library editions have the uh, Superman crossover in them. So still not out of question. Then there was the other mystery with this release. Um, this came out. It had the same trade dress as the Visions and as Justice League. So I, when I saw pictures, I assumed it was going to be a standardized, standardized hardcover. But then it came out. And you can see that it's library sized, but it's not called a library edition. One of the more bizarre choices, I don't understand this move either. Um, so what I'm thinking is that I'm hoping maybe they can combine these two books into a World of Black Hammer volume six or something. And I will go, I'll, I will rebuy these and gift these to someone else or, or what have you. Um, so that the first seven books are what you need to read. These can kind of be read in the order. Colonel Weird and Little Andromeda. Um, you'll recognize the name Andromeda from 
Dr. Andromeda. That's kind of the two main characters in the story. A lot of the artwork is by Ray Fox, but you also have artwork in here by Tyler Bentz, uh, Sean Kurineru, um, Dani, a lot of the, Andre Sorrentino, Tyler Crook, Yuku Shim Shimizu, and Nick Robles. So this is taking Dr. Andromeda through a epic story that you see a lot of like homages to like Little Nemo, like not Nemo, like the Disney movies, like Little Nemo, like the Winsor McKay comic strip, the early Sunday comic strip that Winsor McKay did back in the uh, early 1900s. Um, you'll see a lot of this like Bill Sienkiewicz artwork that like, just reminds me of like Electro Assassin a lot in this art style. But it's just telling us one big graphic novel story. So it kind of reminds me of like a European album. Um, great artwork here by Tyler Bentz. I love that layout right there. But they'll be done in like Sunday strips too, like this. Or they'll be done in little passages, little chapters. And like, again, a lot of Bill Sienkiewicz kind of inspiration throughout these pages. And it is a really great and rewarding tale, and it really fleshes out the Colonel Weird character and humanizes him a little bit more. And it's definitely worth reading, but the release of this hardcover was just a little weird, in my opinion. And then Black Hammer Justice League is amazing. I love this story. Um, this story, you see Black Hammer, the main characters from the farm, switch places with the main Justice League characters. So the Justice League characters are now trapped on the farm, and the main Black Hammer characters are trapped in um, the DC universe. With that said, the uh, DC characters, when they're trapped on the farm, just like the, or they don't know who they are. So you see like Bruce, or Clark Kent here, and Bruce Wayne is driving this truck around. In the midst of that, the Black Hammer characters are trying to fight the giant starfish. So, well, a really, really fun crossover um, of these characters kind of intermingling and trying to figure out their different situations. And I have to say, of all the crossovers, I'm not... I'm always interested by crossovers as far as, like, especially when the two different publishers crossing over. But the, the payoff is usually kind of weak, in my opinion. But this one, not. This payoff is great. It's a lot of fun. If you're, Like I said, if you're a fan of Black Hammer or a fan of Justice League, it's a must-read. So that's it. That's the reading order of Black Hammer. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please th give the video a thumbs up. One great up. thing you could do to uh, support the channel too is to take any of my videos and share a link on your social media. It doesn't cost you a dime, just a little bit of, of your time. And a great way to get other eyes on the channel. I appreciate that every time someone does that. Um, but if you do want to spend some money on some comic books and support the channel monetarily in a way, uh, go to organicpricebooks.com and you can use my code, uh, Taylor Talks Comics in the checkout if you're trying to order any of these great black camera books for instance and it'll save you two dollars off your order if you order four more books which we've talked about more than four books here today four more books and you can save on you can save five percent off of that order it's gonna be a bigger order five percent means a lot and that code is ttc ship it together ttc ship it together that's taylor talks comics so either one of those codes save two dollars off one or two books save five percent off of four or more books um, and I get a little bit of kickback for you doing that. So that doesn't even, that saves you money on comics and I get a little bit of kickback. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a great day and keep reading comics.